Hi, my name is Nejat Sechkin Oral and today I'll be talking about Omni Login Sample app created by Zomni. Main problem of using public devices is people don't feel safe typing their credentials in a public device. So after registering the device to Zomni APIs, we give you the ability to sign in from another device without publicly exposing your password. Let's start with the architecture diagram. First step is registering the device to Zomni APIs and our device queue is ready. Next, we generate a QR code by the combination of the mobile login page, URL and the device ID. User scans the QR and gets redirect to the login page. After logging in, user subscribes to the defined device queue. Remember, user's private information is never sent through this process. This is why we have PII tokens. Okay, let me show you the application. This is our main page. First, we are going to head over to app settings. Endpoint, username, password, these are all for the API credentials. These are for test purposes. Login URL is the URL of our mobile login page. Uh, it will be used in the QR code. Device ID can be anything you want. Just make sure you don't use any white spaces. Just make sure you don't leave it blank or make sure the device ID is not used by another device. This is our QR code. Um, it will redirect the user to our mobile login page with the device ID. I'll need to go to our mobile login page first. Here I have my credentials. I'm going to log in. I'm waiting for a success message. So when I go back, I should be logged in. Yes. So about the wishlist part. These are all coming from Zomni APIs. These are only sample data. You can fetch any data of your wishlist with the price, rating, names, images, anything you can think of. So it's all about the application. Now I'm going to show you how to write an application like this. Let's head over to the code behind part then. Code behind part is fairly easy actually. I have used like 10 methods or so. Before anything else, let me tell you that I'll be using these little code snippets just to gain some time. So first part is creating a client context. A client context consists of three parts, API username, API user password, API service URI. We'll be using this client context everywhere in the application, so make, make sure you save it in a method like this. Next part is registration. Um, oops, sorry. I'll be heading to app settings page. I'm registering my device in the app settings page. First, you need to create a variable named device client or anything you want. A client context of clients company device client. So, next part is registration. I created a variable named registered device and I use device clients post async method and set the model device ID comes from the app settings page so user types in preferred device ID description can be anything just make sure it's a string next part is generating a QR code let me use this Yes. Um, I'll be using QR code clients get async method. Uh, it takes two parameters. This one is actually not so important. It's uh, module size of the data. This part is the important one. Uh, this part is the data you'll be using in the QR code. I simply combine the login URL and the device ID in the QR code and that's all for the QR code actually. Next part is fetching PAI 
user omni tickets so it's where the fun begins I have set up an interval of 5 seconds so simply my device checks every 5 seconds if there is someone coming or not uh, first I created a variable net device client which is client context of omniplace device client next step is creating a variable uh, named result or anything else um, I have used device clients get incomings async method which takes one parameter and that's the device ID it's simple right okay before going further first we need someone to log in sorry um, right we need someone to log in so we are going to mobile login page uh, first we are going to set the PAI users credentials I'm creating another client context standard and I'm setting the PA users password and username to my user model I'm getting the device ID from the query string uh, you saw it in the link actually so subscribing to a device is fairly easy it's a short method uh, client context of device clients subscribe to device method and it takes one parameter which is device ID in our case okay we have come a long way next step is converting omni ticket to omni session I'm going to head over to main page okay if a user log in logs in successfully um, he or she gets an omni ticket so we first need to convert that omni ticket to an omni session <coughs> so I get the omni ticket latest omni ticket and I just uh, trim the first letter which is a P I need to trim it because uh, P stands for PII PII's um, identifier we don't need it so about the conversion part I create the omni ticket client uh, which is client context of omni ticket client and our omni session which is defined in the beginning our omni session is omni ticket clients post session async method I'm creating a new omni ticket here which is the ticket equals to uh, our omni tickets guide parse I need to use guide parse here because uh, guide dot parse method just uh, converts an string a string sorry to a guide and uh, we'll be using guides for wish lists so this is what we got for our omni session actually so for the final part hang on we're almost there <laughs> first uh, let's set our omni session sorry not here yes here client context stop omni session equals to our omni sessions data we are going to fetch all the wish lists of the user because uh, a user can have uh, more than one wish list uh, we are creating a new wish list client which is client context of wish list client our wishlist guides comes from wishlist clients get async method which has no parameters so about fetching the latest wishlist and the items uh, fetching the latest wishlist is fairly easy uh, wishlist guides dot data dot last one uh, fetches the last one uh, this one might be a burden actually uh, it takes fairly enough parameters but uh, 
unfortunately not all of them are a must. I'm going to head over to the portal because uh, they're a bit long. Uh, first one is wishlist unique which is latest wishlist in our case. Longitude, latitude here. Uh, include item static properties it should be set to true actually uh, dynamic properties category metadata false false I didn't want them uh, about the assets I just wanted the image asset details so I used uh, asset detail type include only default um, you can use numbers for them they are, they are innumerable um, about the video and the document asset I have used none and about the metadata k and metadata value I have used example stuff um, uh, seems like it's all for the application uh, thanks for watching I know it's been a long video but thanks again see you later